Well, hello, good morning, and welcome to an episode of Kamara and I. And here we are at Clearbury Down in Wiltshire, near Salisbury, just south of Salisbury. Absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, lost for words, amazing location. Just peaceful and quiet. This is the time we slow down on Camilla and I. Um, it's not a race. Um, that's the beauty of uh, macro photography. There are absolutely loads of butterflies in this field, so we're not going to miss anything. Having said that, we have been up at the crack of dawn this morning because we want to get in early before the butterfly's wings open up. Anyway, we came last night and we staked out the area and put out a number of little purple woolen strands in order that we could then quickly and smoothly locate the butterflies the next day. Weather conditions today are absolutely perfect. So, uh, yep, zero breeze. So we won't need the Wimberley clamp first thing this morning, which is a bit of a bonus. So anyway, enough waffle. Let's get in amongst them and see what we can get. I could already spotted a purple tag. Right, so here's one of our purple tags from last night. I didn't put the tag precisely on the butterfly stalk, otherwise it would have flown off. But I've gone for the next sort of twigs behind. So uh, first job to retrieve the tag. So first of all, we're going for a backlit shot and it's of an Adonis blue. Uh, here we have beautiful chalk hill blue in the frame. Just switch into manual focus. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, wonderful species. Oh. Hopefully you can see this beauty. If not, I'll capture a bit of video. Now what I'm going to carefully do is get round to the other side of the butterfly to get it from this side. Auto focus just to snap in quickly and get the shot. So it's a chalk hill blue. It's a graduated light blue to pale wings. Slightly arch the monopod back. Tuck into the grass. Still on auto focus. F3.5. Come down to try f2.8, 1 2 50th of a second, ISO 160. So it's always great to uh, find a subject. This was one so that was uh, discovered the night before. So um, the advantage of putting up a little bit of string. Of course, the problem we have with all these butterflies is, is it a perfect specimen? I mean, I'm looking at it pretty closely now and I'm thinking it's possibly got a bit of wing damage, which is all right with the wings closed, but when they open, will it look quite so beautiful? Will there be some ragged edges to the wings? which is always a consideration when you've uh, waited all year for the butterfly to turn up and uh, it eventually opens its wings. Anyway, we will see. Yes, yeah, so I've carefully bent the purple flower behind the uh, oxide daisy 
just to make sure that it was clear of our subject so that we got a clear image. But, uh, got to be very respectful of the uh, fauna and flora. We'll come on to ethics later on. So as the sun comes up out of a cloud, the butterfly will now start to uh, open its wings slowly when it feels confident enough to do so. So I position myself with the sun coming up directly behind the subject in anticipation of the wing opening. Well, I found another subject literally just off the path, uh, just down here. And uh, so we're going to uh, concentrate on this one because it's, uh, it's so close and it looks such a good example. So, uh, yeah, I'll bring you a bit closer. Yeah, so I missed this one last night, just off the path, and um, it is literally just off the path, just in the middle there. Absolutely incredible. Chalk Hill Blue Beauty. Well, it might be a good idea to uh, have a break and discuss uh, the ethics of photographing um, quite rare butterflies. I mean, the Chalk Hill Blue is quite a rarity to say the least. It's not a meadow brown. It's not the rarest, but um, it's certainly um, got to be respected. And uh, the main part about this uh, environment is you've got to respect the home it lives in. I mean, you wouldn't like somebody to come into your house and trash it, for example, looking for valuables, etc. And um, it's a bit similar with the butterfly's habitat. You have to tread very carefully. I always try and pick deer tracks through the uh, or obvious little footpaths and um, this example is brilliant being just over here. I mean literally um, within arm's reach, within arm's reach of the actual path. So this gives us a lovely access route where we're not disturbing anything. A tractor would come down here for goodness sakes. So um, we, we've not got a problem with this one in particular, it's brilliant. But you must be respectful of the fauna and flora. I'm no expert and I certainly don't know all the rare species around, but um, I will certainly move grasses out of the way. I will clamp a stem, uh, a stem off with the Wimberley clamp if necessary. Um, but on such a still day as today, it's not necessary. So I won't even go to that invasion. But uh, yeah, tread back in your own footsteps. Don't trample everything within sight and try not to stick to one area all the time so you trample down the grass. And uh, try and let it spring back up. I mean, from last night's um, threading, I can see that the footpaths we've made have already sprung back up. And uh, so it's not really a problem to the butterflies. And obviously we're looking very closely and intently for the Chalk Hill Blue. So we don't want to disturb any other butterflies and we go round those or any other creatures we can avoid. Obviously the old grasshopper and um, a few other things are going to go flying, but that's inevitable. You're not going to see everything. But you do your best, basically. And uh, remember, it's somebody else's home, not yours. Well, I hope you appreciate the lengths we go to on Camilla and I to get you these shots. There's an awful lot of dew on the ground today. So uh, my leg bottoms are absolutely soaking wet. So just a bit on field craft. Um, basically, I've got the monopod set to the height of the grass that the butterfly is perched on. And then I want to really secure those legs off so I can really lean into this camera and lean into support. 
so I get a really rock solid base and I don't slip downwards. With this particular head I can tilt backwards and forwards bringing my subject in and out of focus using manual focus. I can usually also use autofocus to acquire the subject quickly if I've just discovered one or if we're in a flight situation but with a static subject I'm able to do this sort of motion no problem at all. Now aperture settings well be honest butterflies are a great subject because usually in wildlife photography you usually shoot wide open uh, f2.8 would be in this case but I can use anything from f2.8 to oh what is it on this lens f22 f16 I can't remember anyway look up my uh, macro Sony uh, guide if uh, if you uh, want to purchase the tenth sharpest lens in the world absolutely awesome with this lens also I can pull back for manual focus on the barrel push out for autofocus great little feature very snappy in the field so we can set any aperture anyway going back to aperture I mean it can be f2.8 it can be f16 it can be f22 depending how much of the subject we want to get in focus and also how much of the background we want to get in focus obviously the nice wildlife shots butterflies you see in magazines etc usually have a completely diffused background but if you select f2.8 you probably haven't got enough depth of field to get in the whole butterfly so your better bet is probably f4 f3.5 um, maybe even f5.6 it depends how much distance you've got between your subject and the background so it's as I say it can be anything aperture can be anything and obviously with ISO we're trying to keep it as low as possible so the shutter speed we have to select a shutter speed as these do slightly move there is some slight movement in the butterfly so we have to select a reasonable shutter speed but I mean again I've gone down as low as 1 30th of a second in really still conditions and again today we're in quite reasonable light sun's gone behind the cloud at the moment but uh, the sun comes out I mean world's your oyster you can select what you like 1 500th of a second 1 1000th of a second and uh, you'll still get the uh, aperture you require awesome and uh, of course we're on spot metering um, spot focusing and uh, yeah absolutely brilliant and uh, yeah anyway I shall shut up and get shooting now the first thing I've got in my way is a blade of grass and I've got to decide whether I want this blade of glass in my foreground or not because it might make a good frame so don't just destroy the vegetation <laughs> it's not a good idea to destroy the vegetation anyway but I've decided I don't need this blade of grass in the shop so I'm just going to bend it out of the way and uh, yeah so now I've got a clear view of the subject oh darn it blasted things opened up expected well that was unexpected sun's not up but the chalk hill blue is up absolutely awesome Beautiful butterfly. Definitely one of my favourites, along with the Adonis Blue. Next week for the Adonis Blue. I think this is a perfect example.
Now we're moving round for a head-on shot. Perfect example. That's what we want. Beautiful. Oh, how marvellous is that? It doesn't get much better. We'll see if we can get a more top down f shot on it, but it might take off at this point. Again, very difficult to get the whole wings in focus. Ah, oh, well, didn't expect to get it so well. The chalk hill blue in full magnificence. Wow. Battery exhausted. I'm not exhausted, I must admit. What an amazing butterfly. What a great poser. It's now got its wings fully into the sun. The sun's position. First it was a bit disorientated. Didn't realise where the sun was. But now the sun's beating on those wings. And it will go. That's why we're behind it. God, it's doing another pirouette. Just using autofocus because it's going in and out of focus. So I think it's going to fly soon. Just experiment with the depth of field. It's wiped up to f8. Background becomes very visible. Shoot through some grasses. Some head on, head on shots. Oh, that's beautiful footage. Wonderful subject. Superb conditions. Well, that must have been one of the uh, best encounters I've ever had with the Chalk Hill Blue. Absolutely incredible. Got a right poser. I mean, it posed for a good, oof, nearly half an hour. Wings open, wings closed. Didn't know where the sun was. Just did pirouettes. Absolutely amazing. Sometimes they just love Camilla and I. <clears throat> anyway, don't forget to pay them a lot of respect. What I'll do is I'll put a montage of my best little video and um, ooh, hopefully got some great video. Um, to show at the end of this video. <clears throat> Absolutely awesome, incredible footage of the Chalk Hill Blue. Um, beautiful butterfly, uh, one of my favourites, only possibly surpassed by the Adonis Blue, and that's uh, next week on Camilla and I. So uh, don't forget, watch the uh, montage of video at the end, and then Remember to uh, like, subscribe to get and hit that bell notification for next week's episode. Hopefully from the uh, Figsbury Ring. Um, obviously we've got a little, little time span to film it in and Figsbury Ring is close to Salisbury. So we should have, some, uh, should have another video on butterfly photography from Figsbury Ring. Awesome. Well, thanks for watching today and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.